Well, joining us now, and appropriately, he's in Australia. What a time for him to be here. Brendan O'Neill, a chief political reporter for Spiked Online. He's over here now with the Centre for Independent Studies and the IPA have brought you out. Brendan, it's great to see you back in Australia. You've come at the right time, mate. <laughs> we certainly... You had a sellout speech in Perth there. You've got a speech on Tuesday night at the CIS. People can still get tickets to that, cis.org.au. That'll be a terrific evening. Um, you've arrived here. What do you make of Australia's reputation in the world where we have Elon Musk suing the Australian e-safety commissioner uh, because she's determined to protect us all from seeing the truth? You know, I well, I love coming to Australia. I love Australia. But you guys have gone super woke over the past decade or so. I used to think Australia was immune to this kind of stuff. I used to think Australia, because it's so far away and it has this tradition of just not listening to figures in authority. I thought Australia was immune to all the stuff that's been washing over America and Britain and Europe over the past few years. But it is starting to creep in here, quite sadly. And the cancel culture has taken hold in parts of Australia. The crusade against misinformation, so-called, is a new form of censorship dressed up as uh, uh, providing good, decent information. Uh, but, you know, there are also flickers of hope in Australia. I mean, your ballot box revolt against the voice to parliament mm -hmm. was inspiring. That inspired people around the world. I think it kept the flame of Brexit and populism more broadly. It kept that flame going. So there are flickers of optimism. But I do think, you know, we've got to put a stop sign up now to this woke crusade that is moving like a juggernaut across the Western world. James. Well, I want to ask you, though, about that. Do you think that part of the reason why we're seeing such a push by the authorities in this country is because they're rebelling against the people who voted against what they wanted them <laughs> to during the referendum. I mean, we heard during the referendum all the time, this was about misinformation. If only people knew the truth, they would have voted the right way. Is this the authorities punishing Australians for voting the wrong way. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. We had the exact same thing in Britain after we voted for Brexit. There was suddenly all this talk about misinformation and the need to control the flow of information online because they couldn't believe that we defied them. We didn't take their advice. Virtually the entire establishment in the UK, the political class, the cultural elite, the business world, they all said to us, you must vote Remain, otherwise this country will go to hell in a handcart. And we didn't believe them. We said, sorry, we're going to vote Brexit. We're going to do our own thing. And because we defied them, they will never forgive us for doing that. And they instituted all these new ideas about controlling the internet, clamping down on misinformation, making sure that our minds are not brainwashed by demagogues, etc. It's because we voted in a way that they didn't like. And we saw similar developments after Americans voted for Trump in 2016. Mm -hmm. Suddenly there was a huge fear-mongering about the internet and the free flow of information. And we know that the Biden, uh, the Democrat camp, has worked with Silicon Valley to restrict what people can see on the internet. You know, we know they've shadow banned people who were very critical of lockdown. They uh, conspired to ban the Hunter Biden laptop story and to prevent the New York Post from being able to run with that. So censorship is their solution to the fact that ordinary people are no longer listening to them. They can't believe we're thinking for ourselves. And I think we're seeing a similar development in Australia where they are reprimanding the Australian people for defying the establishment and slapping these new forms of censorship on you because you did your own thing. Rita. Uh, Brendan, uh, your view on Australia, you mentioned that that perhaps has shifted over the past decade and I'm wondering how widespread that is because we saw the reaction in Australia, Melbourne having six COVID era lockdowns. Do people in the UK, the US see us differently now? Have we lost that image we had of, of a, having that larrikin culture and live and let live? Uh, are we now seeing as the, the Karens of the world? <laughs> I, I don't think it's gone quite that bad. I don't think you're the Karens of the world. But I think people are worried about the larrikinism and the decline of it. And, you know, one of the people who went viral during the COVID era was Dan Andrews, the psychopath in Victoria. <laughs> you know, I know he, he horrified many Australians, but he horrified people around the world. Clips of him went viral in the UK and other parts of the world as well. And the thing that horrified most was not only the crazy rules that he was bringing in and other premiers were bringing in as well, but the 
tone with which he would talk to people during his press conferences. Mm. He would basically was telling people off. He was like he was the headmaster and you were a classroom full of disobedient children who needed to be put <laughs> in detention. It was that really contemptuous tone that he had. And I think what it really revealed, not only in Australia, but across the Western world, is that there is an authoritarian instinct within the political establishment. Very often they can't let it out. They can't just let it run free because there will be pushback. But during the COVID era, when there was a lot of fear, a lot of terror, people were worried about catching this virus, they could finally unleash their inner authoritarian beast and do all the things that they've long dreamed of doing. So we need a reckoning with what happened during COVID. We need a reckoning with the fact that even a country as wonderful and free and as, as Australia basically put people under house arrest. We need a reckoning with the fact that in Britain, for the first time in history, we were not allowed to leave our homes without the say-so of the state. So all but of at, these at things... least at least Brendan, you had those dancing nurses and things. I mean, so there was all of that excitement to he, keep he you going and the me, clapping. He just <laughs> gave me PTSD there, Brendan, because I, I can now remember Dan Andrews scolding Victorians for watching sunsets. Remember? That's right. Yes. You couldn't where, watch where the sunset. Actually you had the virus. Devoted the press conference to telling us off for watching <laughs> now, a sunset. Now, 